astounding biblical re revelations that prove the existence of UFOs and explain their spiritual significance to mankind. So according to this author, R.L. Dion, it's God, not demons, who fly in a flying saucer. It's an old book. It's starting to decay, actually. It was printed in 1969. I put that date in pencil, as I did on several other videos, because I would forget what the date was when the book was published. His whole thesis, his whole idea is that it's God and angels who fly flying saucers, not demons. I present the material in this book not as a thoroughly Based on sound, my eyes are tearing, that's why I can't see it, sort of mystical revelation or metaphysical hunch, but rather as a collection of pure hard facts, facts based on statistical evidence, which along with some elementary logic lead to the following startling conclusion. And his startling conclusion is that the flying saucers are driven by angels at the command of the great God of the universe. My own personal belief system is My own personal belief system is let me have some tea first. Make my grandmother happy. My own belief system is that there are three layers to divinity. One layer is a pretentious scientist who may or may not be extraterrestrial but is delusional and mentally ill who thinks that it can control the human race. Number two is that there is a transcendent God that is invisible and universal. And three, that there are human beings who are mentally ill, egomaniacs, narcissistic, who think they can control the human race. And their delusion is that they are gods. That's why they're mentally ill, because they're nothing but human. The old joke is, as long as you have to go to the bathroom, defecate and urinate, you're not a real god. So you have an extraterrestrial, number one, or something else that pretends to be god, but is still human. You have two, a transcendental god, that is the real god of the universe, invisible and universal. And three, you have humans who are mentally ill, who think they are gods. 
a windstorm's just come up again. What can I say? The wind even blew my hat right off my head. This is why I'm delusional. This book is by William Reich. I'm not going to go into the details, but I believe firmly in William Reich's belief system. The name of the book is Listen Little Man. It's the origin of fascism. William Wright believed it came from sexual repression. The details are too complicated. If you're interested, look it up in a search engine. You can see how to spell the name. Dr. William Reich, and the book is called Listen, Comma, Little Man. It's anti-fascist. There's been a storm along with the windstorm throwing bricks figuratively at Eric von Daniken. Maybe a lot of people who are watching this video are you too young to remember that when the movie, when the book Chariots of the God first came out, many religious people were absolutely furious. And Eric von Daniken got threats. The idea was so new and so novel so unusual and so strange that many religious people got really angry. So please, before you start throwing bricks figuratively at authors, check your history first and see how the struggle was so difficult. Was God an astronaut? The back of the book says, all over the world there are ruins and improbable objects which cannot be explained by conventional theories of archaeology or religion. But supposing you look at them in the light of today's knowledge and about space travel, a remarkable consistency emerges. They suggest the appearance of beings from other planets in prehistoric times and pose the question, was God an astronaut? When you read this extraordinary book, you will understand why more than 300,000 copies were sold in Germany in 1969 and why it is already a bestseller in England and elsewhere. Please check your history. Eric Bogdanikin was hated by a lot of people just for the simple idea, as I proposed earlier in this video, that one of the pretentious gods, and I say pretentious because they're not real gods, they're phonies, they're liars, pretending to be God.